Welcome back to the program. We've got Jeremy Hook from TMS Capital and Roger Montgomery from www.rogermontgomery.com in with me uh, for tonight's edition of Your Money, Your Call. If you have a question, 1300 3034 is the number to dial. We've got Chris in Sydney as our next caller. Hi, Chris. Yeah, uh, thanks, Nina. Nina, I just wanted to ask uh, Roger about Cochlea COH. It's a good business and uh, uh, it's got some patents and a good dividend too. Uh, I'd just like to know, is it overvalued or what is the value of this company? It's now sort of today it was at about $64 a share. Thanks. Yeah, it's just uh, under that, $63.65. Yeah. Look, it's, um, it's a little bit expensive at the moment, but here's the thing. The value of this business, and I, I'm sure Jeremy will concur, you know, it's a, it, this is one of the, the great stories of Australian business. You know, this is an amazing business. And has the, the whole th horse bolted as far as the share price goes? Well, it, look, the reality, it's, it's a little bit like uh, I, I was talking about, I think, JB Hi-Fi last year. You know, the value of this business is rising um, over the next few years. And, and, and you want a business whose intrinsic value is going up because over long periods of time, price will follow value. Uh, and if the, the value and the price are out of whack, it's the value that ultimately wins. Um, so in the short term, yes, the price is higher than the value for Cochlear, so it is not cheap, uh, it's not a bargain. Um, but the value is rising, so you could take some comfort in the fact that the, the value of the business is going up. And, and you know, the, the great success in this particular company is that its founder um, had the foresight to patent some technologies, which, mm -hmm. which have just meant that they gave them a really big kick along sure. um, to be able to generate some money and then reinvest in development. It is a, is a wonderful, it's a world-class business. It's a great story. Jeremy? There is a lot of growth left in that business. That doesn't mean we own them, as a matter of fact, but um, we're always looking for a cheaper time to, <laughs> to own this one. But they've got a whole range of cheaper products coming to market over the next few years, which will open up uh, a much greater percentage of the population to the cochlear implants. The age, demo the age, and, demographic age and demographic, exactly. all of these things. So mm. the, what you're paying for is theoretically very expensive, but this is more likely going to produce the profits that you're buying than a lot of other companies. Yeah, I think, I think that's a, it's, a, it's a really good point. Um, growth, growth at high rates of return on equity I is going to make you money. Um, but growth, if a company retains profits and grows its profits, um, but it's generating low returns, it requires a lot of money to get that dollar of profit out, you're going to lose money, you're going to do, do your dough eventually. Um, this is a business that is able to retain profits and employ them at very high rates of return, so it's good growth. So even if you were going to buy today, um, uh, you, know, you, you may have to wait a few years before the, the, you know, the value catches up. Um, but, but yeah, and I would prefer to buy it at a discount, so I've got to be okay. careful. I'm so, I'm just so value focused. But look, you could do worse than buying this particular company. W when you're in business, forget about the stock market for a minute. When you're in business, you think about how much money do I have to put in to get this return. Yes. But, but what seems to happen is people forget that. You know, they don't look at that side of the equation. They just think, okay, it's in the right space. It's a good story. Right. There's good thematics. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so it goes up, pops up because you know they've got this great deal. Um, but but it is a, as you say, two billion dollar investment. Um, and you got to think, well, what's the return going to be? And you know, when are they going to come out of the bush? You know, and 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 it really does matter because ultimately your return is going to be determined by that. I've got a feeling you'd say to uh, Brian, put your ten grand into BHP. Well, he's already got it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Extra. yeah, well, look, I just wonder why, if you've got a portfolio of great businesses, why would you buy the 10th best thing? You know, if you've got the first best thing in your portfolio, why not buy more of the first best thing rather than sort of dilute the, the quality of the portfolio by buying the 10th best thing? Okay, we're going to move on to Levi from Melbourne. Hi there. Hi, I just want to know if um, the judges think that ERA and West Farmers are buys at their current levels? Okay, I've got West Farmers in front of me. I can actually talk about that one. This sure. is it's my mad professor. Well, it is a bit. This <laughs> makes sense of all of that yeah, place. I can. Um, look, let me tell you a little bit about West Farmers. Uh, I think today it closed at 28.45 or, or thereabouts. Is that, does that sound about right, Nina? 28.31. 28.31, okay. Um, so my value for this particular business, based on a continuation of its historical performance, if it continues in that vein, you know, roughly what it's done in the past, um, then it's probably worth currently about $23.90. Um, it's worth $27.40 in 2011, and I've got an intrinsic value in 2012 of $29. But that's based on it doing as well as it's done on average in the past. Now, in the past, it had very good rates of return on equity. And it, but then when it bought Coles, 
it paid 20 odd billion dollars for a business. You've never forgiven them for buying coals for that amount, have no, you? 20 billion dollars for four billion dollars of equity generating 27 percent. It's just, it just, it just makes it makes their return on equity about four, four percent, three and a half, four percent return on equity. So as a result, their return on equity is going to drop um, substantially, uh, and as a result, the value based on on, on what we think the earnings will be is a lot lower than those numbers that I've just described. In fact, um, it's uh, 23.90 for 2010. Uh, oh, sorry, $11.24, $15.96, and $18.60, and it's trading at $28.45 today. I think the price, in my opinion, um, is factoring in a turnaround, mm. uh, and and it, it's it's really it's it's done that. The price is reflecting that. Jeremy. Yeah, I describe it as fair value at the moment. Um, got a little overvalued at the end of last year. Um, ERA, that's the other uranium producer yes. in Australia, which is investment grade. It's come down a fair way. Yeah. Substantial shareholder is Rio. Um, so for this caller and the previous one, that's another uranium producer yeah. to look at. And I concur because I, I, on your program last year, you know, I talked about ERA. Yeah, we talked about that quite a, a lot, actually. Intrinsic value rising, good quality, all that sort of stuff. Levi, thanks for your call. John, also in Melbourne, is our next caller. Hi there, John. Um, good, thank you. I was wondering, I've got 3,000 Origin shares, and I was wondering if I'd be better off, I want dividend, and I'm wondering if I'd be better investing in ANZ or NAB. Well, I'll go through some numbers for you. Um, the return on equity for the National Australia Bank uh, over the next three years, 11.4%. This is what's forecast, 11.4%, mm -hmm. 13.7 and 15. And very similar uh, for the ANZ, 12.5, 14.9, 16.4, a little bit better for ANZ. Th August last year, I would have just said Commonwealth Bank, forget all the other banks, just buy the Commonwealth Bank. In fact, I, I probably did. Um, and it's been the best performer. It's now the expensive bank. Mm -hmm. It is head and shoulders. It's yeah. just expensive. It um, but when you look at these two, uh, let me give you some numbers. Um, the current valuation for, uh, or valuation range, if you like, for um, ANZ, I've got, uh, uh, where is it, $23.68, and it's trading at $20.81. Yep. So it's at about a 10, 12, yeah. sort of 15% discount mm -hmm. to intrinsic value. Uh, and National Australia Bank uh, trading at $24.88 or thereabouts, that's on my, my sheet here and I've got it, uh, its value at 24.53. So there's some value in ANZ and there's not value, the way I look at it, right, um, in, it. in NAB. Mm. Price of the Commonwealth Bank today is its intrinsic value in two years' time. Wow. So if you paid today's price it's for the CBA, price. if you paid today's price for CBA, you're waiting two years just for the intrinsic value to catch up, um, whereas you've got some value in the NAB and the ANZ. Um, but let me say this, the CBA's return on equity, which is you know the most important measure of economic performance, I believe, um, even for banks, um, is, is 21, 22%. And, you know, I've gone through the numbers for the NAB and the ANZ, we're talking 10% lower for these guys. So, so they're my second preference if I was going to own any banks, I'd rather own the CBA, but because it's so expensive, you have to look here. Quite a, you know, difference there, isn't there? Well, thanks so much for your call. We're going to Steve from Sydney now. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Hi, good. Um, I just got a question for the panel. I'm a first-time investor looking for about a 12-month investment. Um, I've been doing my research on Commonwealth Bank. Um, would you recommend me buying solely into the Commonwealth Bank or mixing my portfolio? Okay, and what kind of amount of money are you looking at here? Uh, 50000 Right. Um, we've just been having quite a big discussion about the Commonwealth. So, Roger, do you think are all in there or split or what? Yes, yeah, Steve, Steve, look, I think if you're going to buy it, look, it's... It's just one person's view, but if you're going to buy the Commonwealth Bank today, you'd need to be invested longer than a year. Um, and in fact, I would argue that you're buying a business, you're not trading a stock, and a year may in fact be too short a time frame. Um, neither Jeremy nor I know what what is going to happen in Greece, or you know, no. we, we can't predict these things. And your 50 grand, even if you bought a good quality business, could be 30 grand by the end of the year. It's just too short a time frame. You really, if you're buying pieces of businesses, you need to let the business's performance produce the return for you. And that takes years, not months. Mm -hmm. you know, but it's really important not to, not to treat the stock market like a casino where you're flipping a coin and hoping that the thing you buy goes up. Mm -hmm. um, really, just look, ask yourself, do I understand this business? And do I know what it's worth? Well, plenty of people do treat it like a casino, though, don't they? Do they do, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah.